the second tool that we are going to discuss to identify the uh, processes for improvement or to identify the uh, problems in a process is fishbone diagram. Fishbone diagram is also known as cause and effect diagram. It was developed by Ishikawa. It is called fishbone diagram because it is uh, similar uh, to the uh, skeleton of a fish in its uh, construction. And it is called cause and effect diagram because we, we try to find the causes of, uh, of a problem or an effect. And it is also called Ishikawa diagram. It's a simple method of graphically displaying the causes of any given problem. So it's a graphical tool. We define an occurrence of a typically undesirable event or problem that is the effect as the fish head and then identify contributing factors that is the causes as fish bones attached to a backbone and the fish head. The principal causes are typically subdivided into five or six major categories. So they are the human, the machines, methods, material, environment, and administrative, each of which is further divided into sub-causes. Generally, the major categories are identified after, after brainstorming, but these six are a typical uh, causes of a problem. So you can look for these uh, categories as a guide to identify whether these are the major problems uh, for the uh, effect that you are identifying. The process is continued until all possible causes are listed. Usually the steps followed to construct a cause and effect diagram are to first develop a flow chart of the area to be improved so that uh, we have a fair idea of overall flow of the process and interdependence of different operations. That is not mandatory, but it is suggested to draw a flow chart of the, of the process or the department uh, the process is uh, a part of. Then define the problem to be solved. Brainstorm to find all possible causes of the problem. So this is very important that cause and effect diagram is a brainstorming activity. It is constructed after brainstorming. So all relevant stakeholders of the process that you are uh, targeting or the problem that you are solving should be involved in this brainstorming session. So you can have different perspectives of the causes of the problem and make a realistic analysis of the problem. After brainstorming and you list down the possible causes, uh, it is recommended to display those uh, identified causes or using sticky notes or uh, writing on the whiteboard so that everybody can see them. And after discussion and brainstorming, uh, try to organize or group the results in, in, in certain categories. So they become the uh, categories of the causes. So it is all done after discussion and brainstorming. The categories of the problems have been, uh, the categories of the causes have been identified. Then again, discussion takes place, brainstorming takes place to find the root cause or sub cause of each of the major cause that was identified. And the activity continues until uh, each of the category has been uh, discussed in detail and you have identified the root causes. The root causes are the one on which you can work for improvement and they ultimately result in improvement of the process as a whole or the reduction of the problem uh, uh, that, that was uh, actually uh, targeted for improvement. So you can use YY analysis to uh, reach the root cause or it could be simple brainstorming, it could be discussion, or it could be some other technique like uh, maybe nominal group technique, but it is important to have a systematic way to find the root cause 
of the uh, of the major cause categories so here is an example so the problem or effect is written on the right side and then we have major categories of causes they are generally identified after discussion so here the major categories relate to process assembly fabrication and design and for example in assembly the problem could be related to board contamination or components and then there could be uh, two major uh, sub causes related to board contamination they could be storage or it could relate to handling of the board so these two can cause the board contamination that eventually can affect the assembly and ultimately we can have the problem of no solder in hole that is the major problem we are identifying so in assembly this these are two potential issues related to storage and handling that we can target for improvement uh, or we can let's take another example uh, for example there could be some problems related to a process so one of the issue related to process could be related to preheating now the preheating can be because of high temperature and high temperature can be because of uh, varying temperature in the process that is to be controlled so if we can control the variation in the temperature temperature will remain in control preheating problem will be avoided so as a result we we can avoid this problem related to soldering so you can look for other um, causes in this figure as well but the last arrow on any main um, bone in this case is the root cause that we have to target for for improvement so again i repeat for example in this case it high temperature sorry this uh, varying temperature is the last arrow so that is the uh, major cause to to work on or as i identified here the storage and handling of the board is the problem to to work on for improvement or uh, let's take another example uh, to to drive home the idea so related to board is the key way orientation is a is a problem that we can work on for improvement so that will uh, solve the problem of direction across wave so this process related problem will be solved so ultimately the major problem will potentially be solved one important point is that if your cause and effect diagram doesn't have a lot of smaller branches and twigs as you can see in this figure there are many smaller branches if they are not there in your diagram it shows that the understanding of the problem is superficial you don't really understand the problem in detail and you might need the help of people from the relevant departments so that they can help you to identify the root causes so good cause and effect diagram has many smaller branches and twigs as is shown in this figure so this is another example the problem that we are targeting is employee complaints so again we have different uh, categories of the causes you can see so for example uh, the root causes identified here uh, in the case of envi environment for example visibility is a, is a cause and in visibility we have actually two root causes contrast and lighting intensity so if we can improve the contrast and intensity of lighting visibility problems can be resolved so one of the issues related to environment is resolved and employee complaints can reduce or uh, let's take another example there are some administrative problems one of them is uh, salary or the pay of the employees and we may find here that the pay as a whole is fine but as compared to other organizations the incentive pays to the to the employees are lesser so by increasing the incentives or offering the incentives their take home salary or their benefits may increase so they might be more satisfied with the administration and ultimately serve the customer in a better way so in this way you can uh, construct any cause and effect diagram so i repeat that first of all the problem is identified then all possible causes are listed down after brainstorming they are grouped together for each a group of causes further brainstorming or yy analysis or 
some discussion, systematic discussion takes place to find the sub causes in each cause category and finally the root causes. And these are the root causes we can work on for improvement using many techniques of lean manufacturing or work study that we will discuss in this course. Thank you very much.